Shall we start? start? Yeah, yeah, I was thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much, and um, it's a thrill to be here sharing my passion for German wine in general, uh, Riesling in particular, with uh, an, an audience in Shanghai. <laughs> Yang Shi tells me that you're all very knowledgeable about German wine, which is very terrifying for me. <laughs> um, I don't want to bore you by telling you things that you already know, but perhaps you will allow me if I begin by telling you how I see German wine from my perspective. One thing I think we ought to realize is that in German wine in its historical context, in the first half of the last century, top German wines were far, far more expensive than Bordeaux first growths. And then in the middle um, or the 60s, 70s, things went very, very wrong for German wine. There was wide scale re landscaping um, of the German wine regions to make them easier to work, which is an okay thing. But the bad thing was that they, the authorities redrew the map. The thing about, as you can tell from the, the, the name of this session, the thing about Riesling in particular, and Pinot Noir, which we're going to enjoy, is how terroir expressive they are. But the authorities decided that um, as well as having little individual sites, they would create something called a Großlager, which was a much, much bigger area that took the name of a famous individual site within that big area. So, for instance, the, Pies, the, the Mikkelsberg um, uh, vineyard in Peaceport uh, is quite famous. And so they decided they would make a huge area all around the village of Peaceport and call it, including lots of very bad sites, and call it Peaceport and Mikkelsberg because that was a famous name. And this was very confusing for the consumer who, because it, they couldn't tell whether a wine was from one small particular uh, vineyard or was just a, a general blend. 
就是对消费者来讲的话，就是灾难，因为我们根本不知道它是来自一个非常精细的，像伯根地样的小块块一样一个地块，还是来自一个哇很大片土地，然后里面两涌不起的一个大黄河。And at that stage, also Liebfraumilch was a very popular export. Things like Blue Nun, Black Tower. I don't know if you're there known here. Oh, we have got. Yeah, just as well. We actually are still quite bad. We talked about the time when the export of milk was the biggest. The Liebfraumilch is the most famous of all. You know. Then, there are other examples. For example, we see the Blue Nun. It's very scary. It's the color of the milk. It's the color of the milk. 里面是上面画的是那个修女，所以我们就翻成蓝仙姑。啊、呃，像这些酒都是一些低端的大产量的，然后血销全世界各处的地方。他问我中国怎么样，我说中国我们都被宠坏了，我们好像不大喝这样的酒哈。Um, the climate was much cooler then than it is now, and of course Germany is at the northern limit of viticulture in Europe, and so they pulled out a lot of Riesling, the the greatest white wine grape in Germany. And planted instead grape varieties that were much lower quality, and would ripen much earlier, such as Muller Turga. So you see, they did something very smart. Um, you think originally the Burgundy, 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 Exports of German wine were largely made up of cheap blends based on Muller Thurgau, given a little bit of、um, aroma by blending in a, a grape varieties such as Ortega that were、uh, bred specially to develop high sugar levels. And then, because the wines had, because of the climate, were very high in acid, they would literally add grape juice, Sus Reserve, it was called. To sweeten the whole thing up, so it was essentially sugar water. So you see, there are all kinds of human beings in it, and they are being fed, right? It is not a specific grape variety. How do they do it? Then they add the Ortega in it. This grape variety, although it has no very good taste and smell, it can give a very good taste. But generally, it is quite simple. It is also quite simple. So in such a country, the climate is so hot, so they add some sugar in it at the end. The result was that Germany's reputation, of course, German wine's reputation, went right down because、um, there was so much German wine outside Germany was really not very interesting at all. 换成你们也不会喜欢，对吧？就给了你一杯糖水，什么也没有，所以呃，整个德国的品质往下降，然后口碑就是每况愈下，没有人愿意喝这种酒。But There's been a great sea change. I'm delighted to say, and of all the countries in the world producing wine, I would argue that Germany is the one that has most benefited from climate change, because nowadays all the grapes get ripe, fully ripe. 对，但是呢，峰回路转，呃，现在全球气候的变化，我们不能只能简单的说变暖，其实这气候变化使得呢，就是德国本来是很艰难成熟的一个。Um, the um, the best winemakers of Germany, most of whom belong to an association called the VDP, realized in the 80s that the fashion was for dry wine, not for these sugar waters that were being exported. 然后德国大家都听说过 VDP 对吧？这样一个两百多家这个呃顶级的葡萄酒庄的一个联合，他们在八十年代开始就一直在推崇往国外销售。So back then, they did try to make wines, dry wines that they called trocken, but the climate change had not yet taken effect, and sometimes they they made wines that were very high in acid, but with no sugar at all, and so they they were like battery fluid. 对，在那时候就是他们做的这个酒啊，叫干型酒，叫 trocken， 德语里面意思就是绝干的，所以它里面会含有很多糖。But nowadays, in these lovely warm summers that Europe is being treated to,、uh, we Germany produces a majority of really good dry wine based on ripe grapes. Now you can see that in the whole of Germany, the majority of the wine is made by the 
，呃，因为夏天是越来越温暖炎热，那么我们可以得到非常好的及呃充分成熟的这样的一个葡萄酒，不像过去那么尖酸。So we're going to taste. You'll be glad to hear. You don't just have to sit there listening to me talk.、Um, four examples to begin with. 嗯，如果你们愿意的话，就可以先试一试离你最远端的四支白葡萄酒。Um, and there's been a great resurgence of interest, particularly in Riesling, and therefore in German wine.、Uh, yeah. uh, so now German wine once again is fashionable, which is great. And I heard only this morning from my colleague Ian Daggerter, with whom I tasted 55 Chinese wines blind,、um, that in the far north of Italy. American importers are telling their、um, their producers to pull out really old vines of another variety,、um, maybe Silvana, and plant Riesling because Riesling they see Riesling as being so fashionable in the U.S. So you can see that Riesling has a big turn, so the world is very interested in Riesling. The popularity of Riesling is always increasing, making the world more interesting. The Italian Prime Minister was talking about Italy's famous Riesling. The Italian Prime Minister was talking about Italy's famous Riesling. The Italian Prime Minister was talking about Italy's famous Riesling. The Italian Prime Minister was talking about Italy's famous Riesling. The Italian Prime Minister was talking about Italy's famous Riesling. The Italian Prime Minister was talking about Italy's famous Riesling. The Italian Prime Minister was talking about Italy's famous Riesling. The Italian Prime Minister was talking about Italy's famous Riesling. The Italian Prime Minister was talking about Italy's famous Riesling. The Italian Prime Minister Uh, firstly, it is very expressive of terroir, as I've already mentioned, and this is the trend worldwide to express that wines should be as geographically expressive as possible. I know this because I have just finished rewriting the World Atlas of Wine. So, 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 so,
你在这儿看到很多吗？啊、嗯，德国葡萄酒好像默默的在前行，就这种感觉，所以就是你们将是我们将来的这个大使，把我叫进来，一个人扛不起这个担子，终于把这个 PPT 弄出来了，所以 Well, we've got you on the Good, 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 good. So let's start tasting together. Please excuse me if I sit down. I'm sorry, people at the back.、Um, I'll I will occasionally stand up, but it's much easier to taste sitting down. So we have first. The first wine comes from the Rheinhessen. We're going to have an, a, a good、um, combination, a good spread of different styles of wine and different provenances. 所以我们现在开始品鉴的话呢，你会发现酒单上的酒是一个非常好的一个分配吧，就是来自于整个从风格来讲，从来源来讲都是非常丰富多样的。那么我们会暂时坐下来品鉴一下，跟陪伴陪伴大家一起做个品鉴，然后可能呃需要站起来给大家做交流，我们等会再站起来。If any region in Germany、um, personified, exemplified the dramatic Um, revolution that there's been in German wine. It's the Rheinhessen. Oh, so for him, it was best known. It, it's really, it's only famous bit was on the River Rhine itself, the so-called Rhine Front. Around Nierstein, and there used to be oceans of very dreary wine called Nierstein Gutes Domtal, which was one of those gross lagers that I mentioned before, that was not made on a famous site, and it was just sort of rather sticky and heavy and dull. 嗯，对，所以因为在过去的话呢，整个基本上所有的这个生产在莱茵哈森都集中在就靠近那个莱茵河的那一块部分，但是呢，品质真的是。嗯，差强人意，也就是我们刚刚前面讲的哥斯拉哥那种，把所有的一大块土地里面的生产的葡萄全部堆在一起来酿，所以就是甜水。I don't know if you want to use that or if that's the right slide. But、uh, this is a very important slide. I don't know why your picture disappeared. Probably you look better in person, so we don't need to. I'm a black hole. Um. So then, in about. In the 90s,、um, more and more excellent. Oh, and the Rheinhessen is just full of tiny little villages and tiny little wine farms. But in the, about the 1990s, in the far southwest of the region, around villages、um, like Westhofen,、um, the Westhofen, though,、uh, emerged、um, at least two to begin with, absolutely stunning, ambitious young producers. One of whom was Philip Wittmann. Is it still wrong order?、So、oh, I see. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. It's all right.、Yeah. Mm. So I'm just saying that、um, the, in the far southwest of the region, around Westhofen,、um, sudden, which was an area not known, fam wasn't famous for yeah, wine,、well. um, suddenly this new generation led by Wittmann. And Klaus Peter Keller emerged,、mm. yeah. full of ambition,、mm. wanting to make fabulous,、um, largely dry wines. Yeah. So, 刚才我们前面讲到，就是靠近原来是在靠近那个莱茵河旁边生产的比较低廉的那种甜水型的。那么现在其实在这个莱茵河，它其实是很大的地区哈。然后在它的南部，原来是非常名不见经传、没有什么人关注的一些嗯、呃、产区，现在冒出了很多激进的新进分子，他们做的酒品质非常好。那么这里面革新派，比方说今天我们要喝的第一支这个 Wittmann， 啊，他们就是主要是做一些干型的优质酒。And the great thing is that they,、uh, Keller and Wittmann、um, gave inspiration to lots and lots of other producers who have come. Maybe they did some、um, cellar work with them and went home to their family estate and have really made this region、uh, a nucleus of Top quality, exciting wine. I'm thinking people like Stefan Winter and、uh, Jochen Dreis Dreisigacker, for instance. But there are many more. 
所以其实他们不光是只把自己的酒做好，我觉得他们挺挺有那种，就是有点像那个，嗯，一个一个原子核里面的最最核心的一个力量，就是他们会和其他的酒庄一起来酿造、讨论酒窖里的那些工作，所以他把他们最先进的理念或者尝试的一些好的结果都，嗯。分散开来，让大家去共享这样的一个成果，所以整个品质提升非常非常快，所以出现了像刚刚讲到一些瓶子上优酣啊，这些都是一些非常优秀的，呃，从这地方涌现出来的呃酒庄。So, and I've just tasted it, and I think some of you have already, but I, I, I hereby permit you to start tasting officially. Um, and it's to me that's just so typical of the new dry German wine, with the same sort of build. And strength as a, a top quality white Burgundy. 嗯，还是非常呃有代表性的这样一个德国风格的雷司令。但是因为它的那种那种酸度，还有那种通透感，还有它那种复杂度，有时候也会让你想到就是可以去类比顶级的勃艮第的白。I don't know if you've had、um, a mouthful yet, but I'm finding it's just the persistence is amazing. I'm still. Sensing that reverberating combination, of exciting of fruit and acidity and and wonderful freshness、um, that is reverberating around my mouth. From oh, carry on, yeah. 嗯，对，大家可以感受一下第一支酒的这个就是余味非常非常悠长，而且是那种有点震荡感的，然后弹出去的这样一个感觉，一直在口腔中震荡这个回味。From a vintage that's famously nervy and classical. 呃，二零一七年还是比较那种，就是挺有紧致、酸度的那种，非常经典的一个年份。嗯、um, ，So this comes from Morstein, which was the is the oldest vineyard in、uh, Besthofen,、uh, which is actually very big. It's as a hundred. I don't know how much information you've got there. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. But、um, the total area is as big as 125 hectares. But The the pro, the best bit of it is the the middle fifty hectares, which is、uh, where Wittmann's vines are,、um, and it's on a gentle slope, south facing. Hmm. So, 大家看到这个 Wittmann Moshton Moshton 其实就是他们那个园子的名字。就说，嗯、呃，他们这个镇叫 Westenhofen， 他刚刚已经谈到了哈。就是这个镇里面这些葡萄园，本来他家拥有的这个地上挺大的，一百二十多公顷，但是真正好的就中间那一块一部分，只有五十公顷。那么这个呢，这个 Moston 这个园子是南朝南的一个坡度啊，然后朝正南的，所以阳光特别好。And it, this is not an area with very steep、um, slopes like the Mosel, for instance.、Mm. It's clay and sand over limestone, and it gets sufficient sunlight and warmth here in the Rheinhessen. I wish I could show you a map of Germany.、Uh, uh, you, can I? Yeah, of course. Lovely. Good. Good. There. What do I do? I have to、can、press you, that one. Can you point? Let me see. Yeah. You can't point. Sorry.、Yeah. You have to use your finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No, that's fine.、Um, so here we have the orange bit. There is Rheinhessen,、um, and the bit where all this excitement is happening is in that corner there,、um, and it's quite warm enough nowadays to.、Um, To get the grapes ripe enough to produce a dry wine that's thirteen percent alcohol, which is pretty much exactly the same as a white Burgundy would be, and the GG in the name, you probably all know, Grosses Gewex, which,、um, well, you carry on and then I'll. No,、okay. yeah. I still remember. Um, 大家看到就是蓝银汉森就是当中那个橘橘的那个颜色的地方。然后呢，我们刚刚讲的很多星星的呃。有意思的这些酒庄啊，现在都集中在南部。那么，呃，我们讲的这个坡其实不是很陡的，像莫泽尔那种，就是缓坡。嗯、呃，呃，土壤主要是以泥灰型黄土和石灰岩为主。呃，然后他就接着谈到了 GG Girls g o a r t s 其实他讲的这个呢，是一个在德国分级制度里面是最高级的一种干型葡萄酒。And、um, I don't know if you explained how the, the... Grosses Gewex was a system devised by this association of top growers, the VDP, to identify the top sites, and their idea is that it's the equivalent of Burgundy Grand Cru. So Morstein is the best bit of Morstein is a top site. Hmm. So, if you are not familiar, you can compare it with Burgundy. Burgundy, we have a special association. Actually, VDP, this industry, the association, is through. 就是
，有点类似像勃艮第的那种方式来进行的一个分级制度。那么 Morrison 就是在里面，它的地块啊是可以达到就是最高级别特级园这样一个呃呃水平，所以它酿的酒就可以叫 GG。This is medium bodied. In the old days, all German wine was light bodied, and like all German wine, it has lovely acidity. But nowadays, that acidity is counterbalanced by fully ripe fruit. And I don't. You will all have your own descriptors, but for me, this is quite strong in a quite a strong lime kind of、um, flavour. 嗯，就是在嗯，不知道大家对这个酸度的感觉是怎么样的？就是过去的话，酸度可能会特别突兀，但现在的话，因为整个全球。这个气候的变化嘛，也是德国现在果味是越来越成熟，这支酒也有十三度，所以你可以看得到，就是说酸度现在虽然很硬朗和崩脆的那种感觉，但是呢，它可以有成熟的果味和它来进行平衡。嗯、um, ，and as a sign of just how um uh fashionable these wines are, in last the the Germans are very keen on wine auctions. And they have them every year. And at last year's relevant wine auction in Bad Kreuznach, you don't need to say that.、Um, the,、uh, the Pinot Noir from the other Golden Boy of this area,、uh, Klaus Peter Keller,、um, his 2015 Felix, named after his one of his sons, Felix Pinot Noir, went for 800 euros a bottle, which is one heck of a lot for a, a German wine.、Mm. Particularly,、uh, sometimes the sort of very sweet Trockenbier and Auslaser go for very high prices. But this is the first time that a, a, a dry red or even a dry wine of either colour has gone for such a price. So, in this region, you can see that the German wines are now becoming more popular in the world, although they don't want to sell them. We just talked about an example. In last year, there was a wine called Hepinot, from the family of Keller. 家的家的家的那么，呃，一瓶售价达到了八百八百欧元，一支干型的。你想，基本上德国的话，以前这个故事只能由谁来书写？呃，只能由甜型白来书写。那现在就是干型红也可以达到这样一个地位。The GGs, the Grossig of X, are launched every year for,、uh, on the first of September, and every year at the end of August, I try to go to the press showing in the、um, the lovely old spa in Wiesbaden. Where you have a chance to taste every, pretty much every single new Grosses Quebec sitting,、um, sitting down and being served by the children of、um, German wine growers. It's a, it's a fabulous opportunity. So, that because it's nine July, to announce the new wine for the new year. What kind of wine are there? So, in the year of eight, it will go to Germany and visit the Then, with a media presentation, who will be the sponsor? It is those who are producing wine for the children. Our German specialist, Michael Schmidt, always goes. It's usually me and him, and we share the, the work between us.、Um, so we always publish on jansensrobinson.com tasting notes pretty, of pretty much every Grosses Quebec sometime in. September, if you're interested. 嗯，如果大家感兴趣的话，可以去他的网站。他每年都会和他的朋友 Michael Schmidt 两个人分担这些所有鸡鸡的酒的也繁重的这个品鉴任务，然后把每一个酒的品鉴词都发布在他的个人网站上。Um, so now we move to a completely different bit of、uh, Germany and a completely different philosophy. We're going、um, up the Mosel here to.、Um, A tributary, the Zar Valley, way up in、um, the Mosel, very close actually to Luxembourg, the next country.、Um, thank you. And、uh, yes, just as well.、Um, Peter Lauer was、um, a producer on a very, very famous, very, very steep slope in the、um, Zar Valley、um, called Isla Kup. And the Isla Cup Vineyard was one which was made up of lots of little individual sites, and it was one of those ones that was、um, made into a Grosslager. And they,、um, the authorities decided it would be much more、um, convenient, and they did away with the names of the little individual sites. And I'm、oh, sorry, you better, yeah. Thank you. 
Okay. <laughs> there. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yes, of course. You don't have to repeat. I remember. So now we've entered a completely different field. We've entered from Lai Yin Hai Sen. Now we've entered Mo Zeng Er. Maybe it's the most familiar field. Actually, Mo Zeng Er has many connections. So this is from the Sahara field. A field of connections. So it's the most familiar field. So it's the most familiar field. So it's the most familiar field. 那么它里面的品质，因为可以基本上达到呃 ，G G right goes goes almost yes it's yeah, it's a, almost, yeah yeah、嗯、所以就是整个这个基本上就是呃可以以此来命名。那么这个酒庄的呃，你可以看到这上面就写的是 Peter Loa， 也是当地现在是萨这个产区比较有名的一个生产者。And、the estate today is run by Peter Loa's grandson Florian, who Has a philosophy of keeping. They make all the wine in a very funky, traditional way, always still in the old barrels, very old, ba- big old barrels that give no oak flavor to the wine. 那么现在是第呃，他的孙子代，就是 Florian 是他的孙子代，孙子辈在酿酒。那么还是遵从老祖先的一些规矩，比方说他们会用那些大的、老的橡木桶来酿酒。分虽然分在不同的桶里面哈，根据不同的地块，但是呢，整体的这个做法还是非常传统的。And his philosophy is to keep each individual to vinify each individual old single plot in a different barrel, and the a big cask. And the German for a big cask is Fass, and they're each numbered. And this particular bottling is called Fass Number、no. Six.、Mm. 大家看到这个名字挺奇怪的，你看到那个 F A， 那长得像 Beta 一样的那个字，其实就是 S S， 就是 Fast。像 Jesus 刚才解释了一下是什么意思呢？就是他们家酿酒是根据每一个地块进不同的桶，对吧？分而治之，然后呢，桶上面就会写名字。其实这个就是桶的意思。那么我们今天喝的呢，就是桶六第六桶里面的。You can see on the above the green ring there is the word Senior, because Fast Number、no. Six was the barrel that Uh, Peter always chose as his favorite. 嗯，大家看到这个酒标上面会写了一个字叫 senior。senior 在英语里面是什么意思？就是老年人的那个，就是或者是很很高的意思，很高端的。很，那么这个酒是为什么一直用第六桶来来命名它呢？就是因为原来 Florian 就是现在这个孙子辈，他的爷爷叫 Peter 嘛，他原来就专门把这一桶里面酒留给自己喝的，因为那是他自己最喜欢的。And you can tell if you compare the the nose of the first two wines. The 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 Vitman wine comes soaring out of the the glass. You know immediately that it's a, it's a Riesling, whereas the Lauer wine is has a different layer over it. It's not nearly as expressive, although it's very interesting. The second is also quite interesting. 但是呢，如果比较和第一支的话，第一支还是更加的张扬，更加的有表现力，就是直接是叫着喊就飞出来的那种感觉。这支就稍微哎往里收一点。And、uh, Florian Lauer believes in spontaneous、uh, fermentation, not in adding yeast, which is the norm in Germany still, but、um, in what the Germans call sponty, which gives these sort of slightly funky aromas when the wine is still young. 嗯，他们家是坚持使用这个天然酵母，也就是说，他愿意怎么发酵，愿意什么时候发酵，都随酵母自己高兴，所以没有人为的去添加和干预。那么这个还是现在德国大部分的人还是比较喜欢用这种方式的。但是呢，结果就是说，它会带来一些比较特别的一种香气，可能有的人会喜欢，有的人不一定会喜欢。And he believes in fermenting the grapes until the fermentation stops naturally, and you can tell that there is a little bit of Not that much, but a bit of residual sugar left in this wine. 嗯，这支酒其实如果仔细感觉的话，还是有一点点残糖的。And that's a deliberate stylistic thing. Lots and lots of acidity. So it's not a sweet wine. And I, I do think that you could, you could serve this either with or without food. 呃，这这一点点残糖，加上很可爱的果味，酸度也不像前面那只那么的叫嚣着，对吧？就出来了。所以呢，这支酒其实就是你可以独饮，也可以配餐。It's a very, very steep slope, sixty percent.、Uh, his vines are seventy years old. Imagine sixty percent. I mean, that is steep, steeper than <laughs> that's that. 
Um, so really, really difficult here to find people to work on these, these vineyards. That's the big, big problem of the Mosul Valley. Um, imagine spending your working day standing all, all day on a slope like that. You don't have to go to gym. <笑>对吧？所以他们家的，他刚刚给的两个数字，七十七十，就是平均腾龄都是七十年。然后呢，呃，讲到这个坡度是七十度，你们想想看，这个工作简直是特别适合那些练攀岩的人去采收，对吧
呃，目前呢是从父亲 p a n o z i l i c o n 然后传这个接力棒传给他女儿嘛 ，Dorothy。然后他们家的酒呢，我觉得你们应该去看他们家的那个酒窖，超级的这个有特色，就全部在地下的那种湿湿的，然后全部掉的那种黑色的东西。然后，嗯、呃，做的酒呢也是嗯、呃、偏干型吧，就是这样。嗯、so wine number three comes from another、um, region. Oh, can you get thank you? Yes,、right? please.、Oh. <laughs> thank you. The the Rheingau here, the green one,、um, and in fact, it comes from a particular bit, which you can see in that separate bit in the far east of the Rheingau. The Rheingau was traditionally the most famous German wine region, and it had all sorts of very noble estates on it: Schloss this and Schloss that. 对，你可以看到就是。这张地图挺奇怪的，以前我所有的地图那个 r a n g a 那个地方都是黄颜色的，今然后我就说，其实就看上去它是横过来的嘛，像个小帽子一样。今天是绿颜色，我不敢说的。然后那个，嗯、呃，就是那个当中那个绿的那个地方就是 r a n g a 你可以看到它其实因为它是这样子，所以大部分的那个葡萄园都是朝南的，啊、呃，特别优秀但是很小的一个产区。Uh, Schloss Johannesburg, for instance, a great towering white old castle overlooking、uh, the Rhine. Um, is supposed to have been the place where noble rot was discovered in Germany. Anyway, 这边其实有很多酒庄都叫 Schloss 这个 Schloss 那个。然后他举了一个例子，也是我们最熟悉的 Schloss Schloss Johannesburg。那么他家也是号称说是当时最先开始发现和生产就是贵腐甜酒的一个发源地。Um, and the trouble that's the trouble with aristocrats is that they do become a bit complacent. And the 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 old top producers of the Rheingau did become too complacent and started to take shortcuts. And the overall quality of wine produced in the Rheingau went down towards the end of the last century. Um, actually, originally, the Rheingau's this wine quality is very, very good. But because the Rheingau people are very complacent, they don't take too many shortcuts. 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 They don't take too many But now there's an exciting new group <coughs> of producers, just as there is in the Rheinhessen. People like、um, Breuer,、uh, new young woman Eva Fricker, Peter Jakob Kuhn, whose wine we'll be having later, Spritzer, Leitz,、uh, and Künstler,、uh, would be a nice little nucleus of top-performing newer producers. 嗯，但是呢，就是就像前面讲的莱茵汉森一样的，他总是就是像郑权函数一样的有福有起嘛。现在这其实有一批很优秀的酿造者，像刚刚讲的一些，我不知道大家对这名字熟悉不熟悉啊？就 Freke、Peter s h a k o k u 马上我们会喝到这支的。然后呢，还有 Lights， 还有 Hawk 这些，就是好多一些优秀的呃酿造者。And um, the Kutzlers actually um were were. Um, driven out of Germany, and for a long time,、uh, went to make wine in was it Slovakia, somewhere in Eastern Europe,、um, just north of Vienna. Künstler 这个酒庄有一段时间是跑到德国外面去酿酒了，就是在那个嗯 Slovakia 那个找了一个地方开始酿酒，没在德国，后来再回来。嗯。Incidentally, the famous Egon Müller has an estate. It's his wife's family's estate. In Slovakia, and makes a Bella B E L A Riesling there, which is worth looking out for. 嗯，然后另外还有就是刚刚前面讲到的萨地区的伊格穆勒，在斯洛伐克也有呃自己的一个酒庄叫 B E L A 这个 Bella 的酒，请大家就是关注一下。Anyway, nowadays,、um, Gunter Künstler is well established back on the family estate in Hochheim, in the east of the Rheingau. Which is the village which was very, very、um, celebrated in the 19th century, and gave its name to the English word "hock" for Rhine wine. 嗯，嗯，就是 Künstler， 他这个大家看到这个名字上面写的 Hockheim， Hockheim 也是在整个这个产区的东边吧，这样的一个一个村子。然后呢，嗯。现任的这个酒庄的酿酒师 Gunter Kuzler 也是非常非常优秀，而且全世界大家都非常认可的一位优秀的酿酒师。他们家的酒应该也是因为它的品质，使得大家
在呃碰到莱茵高的干型酒，就把它直接直接简称为 Hock， 就是干型的莱茵高酒。So this wine is not a gros a GG a grosses Quebec. It comes from a, a Premier Cru site,、uh, an Erste Lager as it's called in Germany,、uh, which is Helmberg. 那么大家看到第三个单词哦，我我还是把这个找出来。Sorry, I need to find one. <laughs> Sorry, Oops. Sorry. Here. 嗯、um, ，对，前面那个是村子名字，然后后面那个 Herrenberg， 那个就是接在 ER 后面的，就是村子里面的那个葡萄园的名字。那个葡萄园的名字叫 Herrenberg， 但是它不是一个特级园，所以它不能做 GG。大家记住哈，前面讲过 ，GG 一定要是来自于特级园的。那么它是一个像勃艮第的 Premier Cru， 像一级园一样的这样的一个地位。Künstler's style is sort of rich but dry, and I think you can tell that in this wine.、It's, um, he does. He would like to be very organic and and use、um, spontaneous fermentation like Lauer, but his sites are where the River Rhine and the River Main meet, and so it's a very humid area, and it's rather prone to. Um, vine disease, and therefore, he tries to be sustain as sustainable as possible. But it's actually too damp to do without any sprays at all. Um, um, their wine, I don't know if anyone has tasted. If you have, um, had one, you will have a sense that it's still very dry. But although it's dry, it's still very dry. Um, he tries to do this with sustainable yields. Um, but as you can see, the wine is from the Rhine. It's a mixture of Rhine and the River Rhine. 和莱茵河的一个交界口，所以它才会有一个刚刚说的一个绿绿的，像一个帽子一样扣在上面的这样一个平的东西。别人都是竖着的，它是平的。在那个地方交汇，两河一交汇，水汽就大。所以呢，就是说，它如果要是完全不去喷洒这些流的这些波尔多液或者喷气什么的呢，嗯，还是会感染一些呃藤上面的一些病菌的，就没有办法。As you can see, it's a little spritzy, little tiny little bubbles, a few little bubbles in it, not actually fermenting, of course. It was just、uh, bottled with a little bit of the CO2 from fermentation in it, and I find it at the moment just very slight bitterness on the end. 嗯，里面有大家可以感觉到有点这种气泡的那种活泼跳跃感。这不是在在发酵，而是在装瓶的时候里面稍微留了一点点，嗯，二氧化碳，就发酵时候的时候没让它逃逸，就装进去了，所以让这酒非常活泼。然后在结尾的时候有一点点那种分类物质的那种像杏仁皮一样的苦感。It's um, I suspect that if it were if if it had been based on the maybe a, a grosser lager, top Grand Cru site like the Huller, which is the most famous one in、um, Hochheim, it would have had a little bit more、um, depth fruit concentration that would probably not have shown that. Slight bitterness at the end. 嗯，在呃这个 Hohen 最好的一个园呢，应该是叫 Hohle， 就是 H H O L L E。Hohle H O L L E with a umlaut on the O， 两个两个点点，就是最好的一个园子。那么那个园子就不会，就是强调它的浓郁，但是不会有这样的一个有点微苦的这样一个感觉，所以还是蛮有差异的。Now,、um, but I'm sure in time, you, 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 it's just that the wine from this coolish classic vintage needs a bit more time to settle down. I think we're tasting it in it a little bit too young. Now we move somewhere completely different with this funny bottle, the the bo so-called box bottle, which is the characteristic squat bottle of.、Um, thank you, if you don't mind.、Oh, we've got the bottle. Yes, yes thank you. Um, I'll show you where we're going to Franken. Oh, the map. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so we are down.、Um, thank you, thank you, thank you so much.、Uh, here, oh, it's funny, isn't it? The screen,、um, which is very, very continental, as you can tell. It's really the of the traditional wine regions. It's the most far east, so it has a big variation. Between summers and winters, summers can be quite warm, and winters really very cold. And the traditional grape of Franken actually is not Riesling; it's Silvana. Silvana around the world is not seen as being very, very smart,、um, but actually it's at its apogee in Franken, where it makes some really fabulous 
slightly earthy but very characterful wines. 呃，现在我们就到了法兰肯这个产区，大家看到就是最最里面腹地里面了，所以它是一个非常非常大陆性气候的，夏天很炎热，冬天很寒冷。那么我们刚刚看到这个圆形瓶也是当地最有特色的一种装瓶方式，叫 b o c a s Bottle 这样的一个装瓶方式。那么它最有名的葡萄品种并不是雷司令，而是 s i v a n a 西万尼。啊、呃，这个品种呢，就是会有一种那种呃，像怎么讲，呃 ，earthy， 呃，对，有一点点那种草本啊，有一点那种土壤气息啊，就不是那种特别果甜果香的那种感觉。呃，在过去大量种植也是当地最有名的一个品种。And the box bottle is traditional, but I have to say that in practical terms, it's a real pain <laughs> because you can't fit it into a conventional wine rack, and it's pretty awkward in a, a fridge as well. The Chinese like it. <laughs> <laughs> 就是这个形状看的还挺。挺漂亮的哈，反正我觉得我说我们中国人还蛮喜欢的，因为老是让我们想起什么什么干邑啊那种东西，对吧？但是呢，其实如果真是从实用角度来讲的话，真是是一个挺痛苦的一个东西，因为平时你们所有的呃放酒的东西都不不再合适了。It's pretty, and it's it. I suppose one should worship tradition, and、um, I, I have to say that when I see a box bottle, I immediately start to get hmm, because I I very rarely had. Bad wines from Frank, and it seems as though they only export good wines. Oh, that's good to know. 就是看到这个圆形瓶啊，对他来说基本上有点像这个保险保险措施一样。他说，基本上圆形瓶里面倒出来的，他没有太多的经过那种感到失望。基本上他说，是不是把好的酒都装在这里面进行出口？嗯。On the nose, it seems like a sort of um a combination of very light, very very light liquid. Honey and something mineral, quite quite sort of stony. Oh, I forgot to mention the magic word. I'm very very sorry.、Uh, talking about the Peter Lauer wine way back there. Of course, I didn't mention the thing that you all know, which is that、uh, the the Mosel and its famous tributaries are most famous for slate,、uh, which re-radiates summer heat. And perhaps that was responsible, although we're not supposed to say so. Geologists would hate it if we said so. It, perhaps that was responsible for its slight mineral flavour,、mm. but geologists are,、um, are very strict with us today and say we're not allowed to say that there's a direct correct, connection. <laughs> connection between soil type、mm. and how we taste wines. It just so happens that wines made on slate have a particular taste, but well, it's not yet explained why. Good luck translating that. No worries, I remember. <laughs> 就是讲到第四款的时候，因为它的这个品鉴里面啊，是主要是一些像融化了的那种液体状的蜂蜜的那种感觉，同时还带来很有矿石感那种矿物味道。然后讲到这个时候，他说啊，我忘记了讲到一个最重要的一个魔法之词，竟然还没有说，就就跳过去了。他说这简直是不可原谅的，对吧？怎么能够呃说德国雷司令竟然没有提到板岩这个词呢？所以我们就回到第二支。这个第二支来自于莫泽尔的，就是蓝色板岩，当然还有其他颜色哈。就是大家一直都是有一种关联，强调说，哎，是它带来的更多的矿物感在酒里面。但是现在呢，有很多科学家、地质学家研究了之后呢，说你不能直接画一个等号的，他们之间其实有很多复杂的关联，但是不能直接说因为 A 导直接导致 B。嗯 ，I think you can tell that this is the most the strongest of the white wines that we're going to have today. It's thirteen point five percent, whereas the、uh, the Kunstler was twelve point five, and、um, I'm sure that comes partly from the fact that it's so continental that and、uh, and and pretty far south that it's got those lovely warm summers to ripen the grapes. Hmm. So this fourth and fifth wine is the most strong. 酒精度最高的一支酒，十三点五度。因为往前推，我们的 q u e n s l e r 第三支只有十二点五度，所以你可以看到，也许这里面真的是跟它的这个内陆的呃位置有关系。夏天非常炎热，所以有力量把这个糖度啊推的比较高，然后翻译过来就是说酒精可以有很多糖度来转换嘛，酒精度比较高一点。But it's also because this GG site Julius Echterberg is made up of. Very, very hard sandstone and coiper, which is a sort of limestone with fossils in it, and it really retains warmth. So、um, any ray of sunshine. And 2015 was a very warm vintage in Germany, 
is going to translate itself into very ripe grapes. 大家看到这上面的就是呃 Julius H. the Beck 是他的很出名的一个特级园，嗯，所以我们把特级园写在这个名字里面了。这也是为什么再往后看就看到了“鸡鸡”两个字，就放在一起就就就就很清楚了。那么，嗯，二零一五年也是一个特别特别炎热的，在欧洲啊，特别炎热的一个。呃，夏季，所以大家在这支酒里面真的是可以喝到那种成熟度、饱满度高的那个酒精度，相对而言啊，就高一点的这个酒精度。Uh, there's a forest at the top of the vineyard, which is a very steep slope, up to 65% slope,、uh, which protects it from wind. So that would be another reason why the, the vineyard would be particularly warm. And even cabinets, I'm sure you all you all know about predicates, and cabinet is the lightest one. Even cabinets. Produced here can be as much as 14% alcohol, which is very, very unusual. 对，所以他们家的这个田呐、啊，就是朝向也是非常陡的，大概有六十五度左右。前面刚讲个七十，对吧？这只也没好到哪里去，就很艰难。然后呢，它就是从东边、北面都有森林这样的进行一个保护，所以应该来讲，气候还是比较密集在这个地方。就是说，哪怕做一个平时我们觉得酒精度比较低的这个这个 cabinet 这样的一个级别的甜心酒哈、啊，含含糖的那种，一般人家都是在十一点几啊，十二点几，它还可以做到十四度。那么我还补。刚刚漏翻译了一部分关于它的土壤，嗯，那么他们家的土壤呢，主要是含有比较多的这种，就是含有化石的呃石灰石，很非常特殊的一种石膏土，里面就是那种嗯，蛮多那种沉淀的化石的。Very thin soil, you you really feel as though this this uh these grapes have sort of that they they have a very direct relationship with the Um, the rocks, the warm rocks beneath,、um, and of course, Virsing is the leading producer here, so it's doing a, a great job,、um, giving us this lovely 2015、uh, Grosses Gewex.、Um, and I think it has a sort of a light herbaceous note on it, and real power in the middle. I mean, very atypical. It's really not very like. The conventional view of a, a light filigree German Riesling. It's a, it's a big brute of a wine. 嗯，从前面说起哈，土壤，他讲到这个土壤呢，还是非常非常薄层土壤的。所以你们喝的时候，其实这种力量感几乎是可以直接挂钩到，就是它那个薄薄的一层下面那种。岩石受热之后带来的那种反上来的那种温暖的感觉，这种温暖的感觉促生的。呃，它的成熟度，所以这个里面是有一个关联度，可以喝得出来。这个酒在中位的时候特别有力量，特别有那种雄壮的感觉。然后在呃整体上还是有点淡淡的那种草本的气息。嗯、um, ，What else? In soil, yeah, washing. Oh, washing, washing, 还是当当地非常好的、非常有名的、非常好的一个值得信赖的一个好的酒庄。The herbaceous note. I've already done that. Good. Okay. So those are our dry, dry whites, and I would urge you to have a little mouthful of water before we go on to anything as delicate as a Pinot Noir. <laughs> so Pinot Noir time, right? Yes. Ah, good. 好，我们现在就是大家，我们每个人都自己安静的先品一下，嗯，三支红葡萄酒，然后我们一起来说。Shall I? Shall we leave them to taste them? We. So you take、yeah. them one by one. So would you like that? Yeah, maybe we'll give them one minute. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But do make sure you have water first. Oh, 对，大家先漱漱口啊，嗯，喝一下，就保持口腔的这个中性，然后我们嗯进入到第二个这个环节，红葡萄酒的环节。Oh, do you want? Are they going to taste all of them? Yeah, all of them.、Oh, I'll give、why? them one minute.、Oh. <laughs> they, why? Why? Why taste them all? I okay. I ask them to stop because、uh, they do. If they, they can, they very much. I I think it's just slightly different. Like this one, you go one by one. This one, then、okay. they already got a first impression. Then they can compare the impression with okay. yours. Okay. <laughs> Something different to play. <laughs>
Do you want the map or the wine? I can do the map. The wine. Okay. Number five. Okay. Done. You can start anytime you want. Okay, so the first wine, number five, I, I actually have in my cellar. I tasted it at a tasting. Um, someone, a German specialist wine importer, who also imports, specializes in Burgundy, organized uh, a big tasting of German uh, Spätburgunder, Pinot Noir. Um, and I was so impressed by this wine, I bought two cases. I bought a case of this and a case of the next vintage. <笑>所以现在我正在喝的这个第五支酒，等于说我们就变相的在喝他们家的这个酒窖里的酒了。他说他也有买了两箱，因为也是他很好的一个很熟悉的一个进口商嘛，做德国酒的，就是黑皮诺。然后喝了以后觉得特别好，所以他买了两箱这个，然后还买了下一个年份的，也是一样的酒。And at this tasting, I remember a, a Burgundy collector going around tasting the wines and explaining. I'm a refugee from Burgundy. I can't afford Burgundy anymore, so now I'm buying this wonderful straight Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> 对呀、啊，他说他他特别搞笑，就是有的人不是就是在喝这个德国黑皮诺嘛，然后一边喝一边还在叫嚣着说自己是呃来自勃艮第的难民。为什么勃艮第现在实在是太贵了，贵到买不起，没法剁手啊，就直接剁脖子算了。就是呃，所以他说我现在就直接来喝德国勃艮呃德国的黑皮诺了。我觉得这是变相在承认，就是德国可以做很好的黑皮诺。But it's very, very recent that Ger that German Spätburgunder, German Pinot Noir, has been as good as it is. I remember when they couldn't ripen it properly at all, and it was pale. It was pale grayish pink,、um, sometimes sweet, sweetened up because it was so high in acidity.、Um, often traces of rot, bad rot, not noble rot, grey rot.、Uh, not a nice wine at all. Sounds disgusting. <笑>一点也不愉悦，听起来就是看到这些优秀的作品，就想起，因为他简直就像一个百科全书，啪一下就啪啪翻到前面多少年以前的事情。他就说，之前德国做出来的这个黑皮诺，就是那种淡淡的、灰不唧唧，还泛点很奇怪的颜色，然后酸度因为特别高，不能够完全成熟，还里面莫名其妙加了一点甜的那个残糖在里面，然后这个酒就特别恶心。然后里面还有一些很奇怪的那种，因为不是贵腐菌清源，而且而且一些低廉的其他的腐烂的霉菌清源以后带来的怪味，呃，就是这样的一种呈现在过去。And then came the inevitable next stage, which so many wine regions and countries go through, and China is no exception.、Uh, when yes, you could more or less ripen the grapes, and vintners discovered oak. And thoroughly submerged any fruit they had in new oak. 嗯，然后下一步是什么呢？其实这一步我们中国人好像呃酿酒也很多走了这条路，就是呃大家发现橡木桶的运用对这个风格的改变，所以大家就会把这个果味和橡木桶进行结合，把它放到里面进行一个整合。And that happened quite a lot in the first decade of this century. I would say the second decade is bringing in a golden era of German Pinot Noir, and it really should be taken seriously, particularly since it's not as expensive as Burgundy. 对，本世纪的时候，其实之前，嗯，品质还没有像现在这么好。嗯，慢慢的到了从一零年之后吧，就越来越发现整个这个德国的黑皮诺上了一个很大的台阶，越来越值得我们认真对待。So it offers the delicacy of red Burgundy and the excitement. Of、um, dis <laughs> distinctions between different vineyards. 嗯，所以就是它有那种像勃艮第那样的那种精妙感，但同时呢，它又能表现出不同的葡萄园之间的细微的差异。Now, but this first one is a newcomer, and the site is not yet quote,、uh, question mark classified as a GG for Pinot Noir, but it certainly is a GG for Riesling. Uh, which is what has traditionally been planted there. 嗯，我们今天喝第五支嘛，那
它其实原子的话，如果中，因为它里面中了雷司令是可以划分成基基的，但是，嗯、呃，作为红的话，目前还没有直接把它作为一个特级原的酒来标识。This is from the other famous tributary of the Mosel, way up in the north of, of Germany, near, very near Luxembourg.、Um, the Ruwer, R U W E R. 那么前面讲过一个 s a 这个支流，其实墨子尔有好多支流。那么现在讲的这个支流呢，叫 Ruwer R U W E R， 他刚刚给大家拼了一下。那么它很靠近卢森堡，在这边，就是啊，你们的这边。This is a site that has the the Romans almost certainly discovered and planted, and they have records of it being、uh, of vines growing there from the fourth century. 所以，罗马人很早就发现了这样的一个特殊的地方，然后呢，在公元四世纪就开始在此种植和酿造。Maximin Grünhaus is a, a slope above a rather beautiful manor house, which has been in the von Schubert family for generations. 然后 ，Maxim Grünhaus 就是这个酒，这个。酿酒者哈，酿这个酒庄，他们的这个，我如果去过的话，你会发现，就是整个这个庄园别墅啊，非常非常壮观。然后下面坐拥三个非常好的葡萄园。It's our steepest slope of the day, seventy percent,、um, but it's in a curve, and it means that most of the vines get sun all day long. 那么他们的 on, on blue slate. <laughs> blue slate. <laughs> Uh, the, yeah. Any time when it comes to Mosul, uh, 那么他们这个三个葡萄园呢，其他两个我就不说了哈，就说这个跟这个酒相关的这个嗯 ，Upsberg 这个单一的葡萄园，那么它是七十度的一个坡度，又来了很陡，然后呢，里面是蓝色的泥盆迹的这种板岩。And the the slope is divided. The main bit and the best bit is called Upsberg for the 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 wine that you would give to the abbot. Um, and then there's also Bruderberg. For the brothers and Helen Bag, just for the men, much more. <laughs> 嗯，对，另外还有两个，他也介绍，那我也跟着说一下吧。就是 Brudenberg， 就是意思是 brother， 就是兄弟的那个园子，呃，坡度 ，Berg 就是坡嘛。然后还有 Helen Bag， 就是男人，人这样的一个坡，这样的三个园子。So, um, Karl von Schubert, who is in charge of the estate at the moment, uh, found himself mistaking a German. Pinot Noir for a Chambord Musigny, a Burgundy, which inspired him to try to see produce some really good Pinot Noir, Chambord Burgundy, up here in his vineyards. 这个酒庄的目前的庄主应该其实是庄主和他儿子啊，就是庄主名字叫 Carvin Schubert， 他儿子是叫 Maximilian。那么他们两个人在一起，就是为什么会来种这个黑皮诺？就是因为父亲在有一次莫名其妙盲品的时候喝到了一支，就是。香布梅斯尼就是香爆了梅斯尼，结果就被梅死了。他就在想，哎，是不是可以在呃我们自己的地方也种这个勃艮第的黑皮诺？就这样缘起。So in 2006, he planted almost one hectare in the middle of his glorious Abtsberg vineyard with a mixture of、um, French and German clones of Pinot Noir. 所以在二零零六年的时候，他就选了这个刚刚讲过的 Upsberg 这个单一葡萄园里面的中间部分，然后精心的种下了呃黑皮诺，大概是是一个混合，因为它里面也有德国的，也有就是德国本土的，也有法国引进的黑皮诺的克隆种。They they labeled year early vintages Spätburgunder, the German name, but I think it was his son Maximilian who suggested that from this vintage, the 2015, a nice warm vintage, admittedly. Um, they should change the name to Pinot Noir because it was a much, much sexier name that everybody wants. <laughs> <laughs> 对，原来是叫 Spätburgen 的，就是 Spät 就是早呃晚晚嘛，对吧？然后后来呢，就是从他儿子的建议开始，呃，认为现在大家还是比较尊追从这个黑皮诺这个 Pinot Noir 这个名字，所以现在就把名字给改掉了。酒单上大家也体现出来了。I would love to give this wine blind. In fact, I might have done at our dinner table、um, to wine lovers, Burgundy lovers, because I don't think that they would immediately say that's German. It has the same delicacy and balance as a very pretty Burgundy.、Um, you know, maybe maybe more Cote de Beaune than Cote de Nuit,、mm. um, but it's it's I love its nice truffly, mushroomy kind of、uh, aroma. 
，其实如果这支酒去在盲品时候玩玩别人，还挺有意思的哈。就是可能不一定马上就能辨识出说啊，这一定是来自德国的，因为它可能特征性跟勃艮第还是有点模糊的，因为它也拥有了勃艮第的那种精细的精妙的感觉，很优雅。嗯，那么，呃，我聊。嗯、um, ，so just yeah. truffles, mushrooms. Oh yeah, yeah. 就是还是香气上面还是蛮复杂的。你可以感受到，就是那种松露啊，然后那种菌菇味啊，各方面的层次都表现的很好。It's thirteen point five percent alcohol, which I think suggests that the, he must have kept the yields quite low、mm. to get the grapes that right this far north.、Mm. Um, but I find that a very nice, well balanced, as I say, pretty wine、mm. for drinking. Now and maybe、um, over the next four, five years. This wine is 13.5 degrees. You think about it. In the cold Mozart, such a cold place, I think it is that he kept the production low, very, very low, to ensure that every grape can reach such a beautiful maturity. Um, basically, this wine, from the perspective of the wine, is very, very mature. It has the ability to produce four to five years. If you add it for five to ten years, it is absolutely no problem. Uh, can we have the map again? Yes, sure. Because now we're going to go to the area. The Mosul is not known for Pinot Noir at all, although there's a very good new producer, young guy,、um, called Daniel. His, his, he calls his wine Pinot Noix, N-O-I-X, and you can look it up on、um, my website and see what his Daniel something.、Um, But no, Pinot Noir is unusual in the Mosul, but it is very common and、uh, this far south in Baden, just over the border from Alsace. 大家可以看到，往南哈，就是从左边，它的那个左边就是法国的阿尔萨斯产区，跨过来就是南部的温暖的巴登产区。现在我们就来到了第六至九巴登产区。This is、um, a, a made by the man who is credit who who has been known as Germany's king of Pinot Noir, <laughs> Bernard Huber,、um, who very sadly died in to, at the age of only fifty five, the year before this was made in two thousand and fourteen. 嗯，这支酒的主人就是 Bernard Huber， 这个雨博酒庄，嗯，就是在二零一四年，这支酒。做出来的前一年去世的，十年才五十五岁，挺年轻的。我想把这支酒找出来，等一下。Yeah, okay. As was so common then, um, the um, the the Huber family grew grapes and took them all to the local co-op. There's a particularly powerful co-op in Baden. Um, but when Bernard took over in the eighties, he decided that he was going to make wine himself. 早先的时候呢，家里面做的葡萄其实就是把它，呃，装到一起去，就扔给那个当地的合作社，因为当地合作社很厉害，很强势，直接就把葡萄给就放在一起就酿掉了。那么八十年代的时候，这个 b e n a 来掌权这个酒庄的时候呢，他还是非常有野心的，嗯、呃，就决定这个葡萄自己来酿。这就为什么后来他慢慢成功被称为这个德国的黑皮诺之父。He inherited five hectares of vines and steadily built it up to an estate of twenty-eight. Um, or always labeling it with the separate vineyards above his winery. He 刚刚接手的时候才五公顷，后来他逐渐扩张他的地盘，一直达到二十八公顷左右。那么他呢，也是一块根据不同的个性把它单独标识出来。When he started, the area of Baden known as Kaiserstuhl, the emperor's seat,、uh, was definitely the most famous. Bit of Baden, probably the only bit that was at all celebrated for its Pinots. 在他刚刚接手的时候，其实巴登的产区最有名的，可能大家就知道 Kaiserstuhl 这一个地区。那么后来就因为他故事而改变了。接着听。Bernard Huber, however, is in another area called Breisgau, and he knew that the Cistercian monks had had uh, uh, brought the vine. To, to his village, Maltedingen, and had great success with it. 但是他不在那个产区，他在哪儿呢？他在那个 Breisgau 这个地区，在那个地区很特别。为什么呢？呃，他知道在西都教会的那个僧侣，他们在十四世纪的时候就把勃艮第的那些黑皮诺就带到这个地方来了，所以历史很悠久。
This, the monks came almost 700 years ago and planted this particular parcel in the middle of the rather big Bienenberg vineyard uh, from which um, the Huber uh, bottling comes. 然后那些西都会的教士把这个黑瓶带到哪里呢 faces south, of course, has, and gets lots and lots of sunshine um, And its slope is between 10 and 50% mainly shell limestone uh, and mostly terraced. And he was so meticulous in his vine growing and his wine making. Uh, people were very skeptical at first because he was creating a whole new area for and a whole new combination of area and grape. But his 1990 vintage was so brilliant that he made his reputation as um, the, the king of Pinot. 这个园子呢是大概差不多十到五十度左右都有 但是在一九九零年，就是这个年份的时候，他正式敲定了他在江湖上的地位，因为大家一喝，一喝他做出来的酒，觉得哇，这人太厉害了，就把他定成黑瓶诺的之王。This wine will have been made the first one by his wife, son, and daughter. Um, so perhaps it's not typical of a Huber wine yet. I'm sure that they're um, getting the groove, so to speak. Um, but it's, it doesn't taste as though it's from such a ripe vintage as 2015 was. But the, the wines have a reputation for aging almost better than any other German Pinot. And I think we're probably drinking it just a little bit too young. <laughs> 但是呢，大家喝下来觉得这个酒还是非常非常年轻啊。他说我们有沙幼了，就是首先你不觉得这个酒是从那么热的巴登这个产区过来的。第二个就觉得哇，怎么这么年轻，好像很能放。所以这个
Asphalt. Asphalt. Yes. Yeah. Tar. 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 Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the the genes Stodden um, is the is seen as one of maybe one or two of the Maya Neckel is another very famous good producer in the R Valley. Uh, Stodden though is the hero of our special what German wine specialist on JanetisRobinson.com, Michael Schmidt, who used to live in England and uh, was so keen on German wine in general, and R uh, in particular, that he now lives in the R. And um, he keeps reminding me that at one stage I was a bit sceptical about German wine. And he says he, if when he drove off to the R, he thought of putting a, a sticker in the back of his car saying, I told you so. <笑>好长一段哈我们现在就是进入到今天第七支然后呢我们可以看一下在上面最小的那个红红的地方嗯就是我们的二产区很小所以喝到二的酒都觉得很很激动因为他们实在是产量很小出口的很少嗯整个产
Even ju- even English Pinot Noir is not bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. 嗯，补充说一下，那么这个酒呢是呃，这个原子是基本上他们家有十七公顷左右吧，海拔都是在一百三到两百六十米左右的这样一个高度。嗯，一四年虽然这支酒比前面两支酒酸度稍微低一点，但是整体来说还是很清新。他是觉得嗯，应该来讲的话，德国的。这三支酒应该是真的是可以表达这个德国黑皮诺的一个水平吧，所以他说很多人不愿意去呃承认说德国人还能酿造这么好的黑皮诺，然后他就问我说我们嗯、呃、在座的各位来宾有没有很熟悉德国的黑皮诺？我说应该还是比较了解的，嗯、呃，没有太多的偏见，应该。And finally, to two sweet wines. Sweet wines are something that Germany has always been very very good at. Um, very precise um, making with its very careful steps. You know that go from Auslaser, beer and Auslaser, Trocken beer and Auslaser, depending on uh, how sweet the, the grape, how ripe the grapes were, what the must weight was. 嗯，后面最后两支甜型酒，基本上就是大家熟悉的德国甜型酒的一个分级制度，根据它里面的呃采收下来的葡萄的含糖量的级别划分的，呃 B A T B A 这样一路路上去，呃，残糖量越来越浓郁的丰厚高。<笑> so this is the first step of a, a noble sweet wine. Um, with, with it won't be all botrytized by any means. And in a way, these are wines which, when you age them, they become, they seem to taste less and less sweet as they get old. Don't say that. Um, 我们喝的这个第八支 Auslaus 也是里面，嗯，是会含有一部分，当然不是不需要百分之百都是贵腐的这样做的一种甜酒。那么虽然它有很高的含糖量，但是这种酒因为很能陈年。在你经历了很漫长的这个陈年过程之后，你会发现你对糖的那种知觉反而会下降，就更加的让你觉得这酒好圆润，好好和谐。And this is just so as precise as the word for it. You know, there are so many loose, baggy, sickly sweet wines around,、um, but this, with the combination of Riesling, a great site, a great grower, and.、Um, A, a very propitious year.、Um, that、uh, it, it's just inimitable, and it's it's gorgeous already. But I'm sure it will last for another twenty or thirty years. 就是甜酒做的不好，就会给人松松垮垮的，然后非常令人不悦。但是你喝到这样的一种甜酒，你来自于最好的呃甜，最好的酒庄。然后最精细的这种酿造方式，你可以感觉它就是那种精精雕细琢，<笑>没有瑕疵，特别特别的精准，对整个这个味道的一种味觉的诠释。A bit of passion fruit,、um, a bit of、um, some sort of tropical flowers,、um, both fruit and flowers.、Uh, that love, that great balance, like a trapeze artist of the the fruit and the acidity, and thoroughly, thoroughly clean, not at all sickly. 嗯，一点都不是让人感觉齁、恶心的那种很甜齁的那种感觉，而是非常精妙的那种平衡，酸糖之间。Um, I, we've been to the Rheingau before in the far east of the Rheingau with the Kunzler wine,、um, and here Peter, I've mentioned then Peter Jakob Kuhn as being one of the newer estates that's put the Rheingau back on the map, and they. The, the Kuhns have been big pioneers of organic viticulture on the Rheingau. 嗯，这一家酒庄就是 Peter Jacob Kuhn 在呃莱茵高地区。如果大家有机会，一定要去访问，非常有特色，非常值得去看一下。就是他做这个有机种植啊什么，基本上是他把整个莱茵高拎到很高的一个地位，然后让大家重新关注莱茵高这个产区。因为你看这个表现嘛，里面这种充满了这种，刚才我漏翻了，说里面就是很多这个百香果啊。I forgot to mention something. That's why I'm adding back. Yeah, yeah. 百香果，还有那个他讲的那种热带的花和水果的一种混合，那种和谐。Uh, um, I um, this was the first estate that I visited that um used vinolox. You know the glass stoppers. I don't know. Was this? Do you know whether this was stoppered with a glass stopper? It looks to me as though they've gone back to corks. 这一支有用那个玻璃塞吗？ Yeah. 没有。Yeah, 
I think, I don't, do you see many wines here with the Vino Lodge? Some of them, and yeah. from Austria as well. Uh-huh, yes. Um, I think some producers have had some problems. They, they're very nice to look at um, and reusable, which mm-hmm. is, which is yes. uh, helpful because corks can expand so quickly that you can't get them back in. Um, but I personally, I just don't have the knack of, I always struggle with them a bit to get them off. And I know that producers, some producers have had problems with them chipping. Oh. You know, yeah. I don't know if you want to say that. Um,刚才讨论另外一种就是把这个瓶子就是封装起来的一种像母塞 Talking about stoppers, of course, it may be the case that they do use Vinolop in every other market, but they know that the Chinese love natural corks, and so they put the, a natural cork in the wine that's due to be shipped to China. I know that this is happening for Australians, as you know that China has become the most important market for Australia, and one or two uh, complete screw cap converts um, have said to uh, as Australian wine producers have admitted to me that they're thinking of going back to Corks just Poor because China. you insist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we should take the blame. <laughs> Uh,螺旋塞的追随者,他们就是专门为中国市场单独装瓶用橡木塞塞进去来卖给我们。我觉得我们好像没有这样的一个偏见,有吗?有些地区有,哦,有些地区有。What did they all say yes? This is some part of China, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> um, the a landscape now is so different from many of the places I've been describing. It's not at all steep. Um, it's quite a gentle slope. South pace. A lot gently going down to the Rhine, broad Rhine, which is full of very like the river here, full of barges going up and down the river. Very, very busy waterway. This is just a, the slope is just three to fifteen percent, and it's a very deep, loose soil in a sort of protected bowl. So that's why I think it uh, it's warm and warm enough, but is also close to the river which is encouraging the Botrytis. And I think this is a site, as, uh, the Lincoln Vineyard above the village of Erstry, that um, is very prone to Botrytis, a noble rod, mm. which is what you need for our state. We can see this ostrich lantern. When we talk about this place,河流蓝银河所以在这个蓝银高这个地区呢这块地区特别适合贵府郡的生长他说这个河流啊当时走过去看就有点像我们的黄浦江一样的挺繁忙的下面好多驳船开来开去的然后呢水汽呢在秋天
is very, very biodynamic, um, very pure, concentrated wines, really rather wonderful. Um, Bassaman Jordan um, is a little bit more traditional and is our oldest wine here today from 2011, which was a very, very good vintage for Botrytis. 我们今天的最后一支酒来自于巴斯曼·约翰。那么在法尔兹呢，做这个酒啊，有很著名的三个以避开头的杀手。那么重点强调了，除了这个巴斯曼·约翰，还有一个叫伯克林·沃夫。但
呃，如果大家呃有什么问题，现在是抓紧时间，不要放他走啊，赶紧问问题。嗯、呃，可以是很呃专业的、对口的，或者是就是比较就是啊、呃、泛泛的一些问题都可以。嗯、呃，有人。So, should we have a little vote now? Um, we we first take the question, then ask the answer. Okay, I see your hand. No problem. I remember. I mean, we needn't we needn't count every last quote. Just get a general impression. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. you you do it. Okay. So well, perhaps you'd better do it. In, I do the counting. You, you well because the, then you, people oh, will okay. understand. So okay. you you do it. We 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 start to count the answers first, and then we will ask the answer. The first nine. 喜欢的人请举手，你就一次机会啊，白，想清楚哦。Okay, 最喜欢的，这是你最喜欢的白哦。Three, four, five, six. Okay, I'll I'll do the counting. Okay, do the talk. 好，第二支酒喜欢的请举手，只有一次机会，不能再举。Ah, naturalistas. 嗯哼，多少 ？Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay. 好，第三支酒。Importers are not allowed to vote. This is 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 not allowed One, 你们是不是没有含那个？啊、uh, ，Sorry, they, they only think about the first few.、Uh, okay, 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 fine, fine, okay. Then we'll um we'll ask about the the, the, the dessert one.、Oh, okay. So okay, so we'll let's do the red. Let's do the red. Okay, 第五支最喜欢的红。第六支，你的心头大爱。<笑>第七支，哦 ，Look at that。I expect that. Eighteen. Yes. Very good. Very clear winner. Yes. So very clear winner. Lauer and Stodden. Are they, are the winners? Well, should we have a little vote on the sweet one? Oh yeah. Yeah. 好，那我们现在再给大家举一下这个八和九，好吗？喜欢八的举手。Yeah. And then the next, the other one. 喜欢九的举手，没有了是吗？啊，还有一点。Very good. Thank you very much. 谢谢谢谢。Oh, now shall we do the Q and A? Yeah. Okay. But if, but if nobody has a question. Oh, I've already seen one hand over there. 呃，有别的话筒吗？还是就一个话筒了？就有那我下去吧。There's a white gentleman there. You don't have to ask any questions. I'm quite happy. We can just sit and enjoy the rest of the wine. Hi. <laughs> Hello. I'm not sure about wine. And I have a question、uh, because I taste the、uh, number eight and number nine.、Uh, Chateau Yquem is very famous, right?、Um, The taste is so similar. So, what is the difference between the which one? No more rot. No more rot. Why between the eight and nine? What's the difference? The amount of rot. For example, if it's a blind tasting, yeah. Just cannot tell. For example, nine between Chateau Yquem, maybe yes, a little bit more, less than Chateau Yquem, but for nine. Do you, sorry, is the question is the, how do you are you saying that these wines taste very like other Botrytis wines outside Germany? Yes. Oh, I think um, well, for a start, you've got a strong Riesling ingredient in these wines, and obviously uh, uh, in Bordeaux you've got Semillon and Sauvignon, much fatter. Oilier, much it would have much less acidity and much more body.、Uh, a, a white Bordeaux, yeah, more alcohol, much more alcohol. I mean, there'd be 
over, over 13% alcohol, whereas these are half that. So that would be an immediate clue. Okay, so the level of uh, alcohol. That's that would be, a, yeah, the level of alcohol and, okay. and the grape flavor. Okay. I, I think they say a little bit, I need this. She keeps me too busy tasting wine. <laughs> Suddenly, everyone's got a question or a comment. <laughs> somewhere with very good food, um, uh, if I'm going to live there. Um, so I sometimes, I, I sometimes think um, the Lange Hills, Barolo, Barbaresco, which is where the food is fabulous and the, the challenge of, of the, the very varied terroir, um, I think that would be all right, yeah. <laughs> For me, Pinot Noir does not have to be very concentrated. I can very much enjoy a fragrant, um, fairly light-bodied, refreshing Pinot Noir because uh, if it expresses a place, um, because that's something that very few other grapes can do. Almost any red wine grape can give you a... Um, but it's the uniqueness of Pinot Noir that I enjoy. That said... Um, 
Yes, a, a, a very old, fabulous um, uh, Grand Cru Burgundy that's been in bottle for 20 years and has developed marvellous subtleties. That does not qualify as being light and delicate fragrant. That's great too. And it was a Chambon Musigny Les Amoureuses 1959 that converted me to wine when I was a student. Yeah. With a boyfriend, do we yeah. remember that? <laughs> <laughs> 那个刚才跟我也比较好其他的相亲但总的来讲黑瓶诺让人家喜欢是因为它是轻度的酒体就是借由我们也要从一个很高的起点开始 Apart from Germany, any other uh, places in the world that you think worth considering when it comes to Pinot Noir? That's a very good question. Um, I think that, that the cooler, the coolest bits of the Pacific coast of California are now making some very fine wine. There is a, a, a a guy called Raj Pa um, in Santa Rita Hills near Santa Barbara, um, Sandy and Domaine de la Cote, fabulous, delicate Pinot Noir. Um, New Zealand is good for very easy, approachable, quite fruity uh, Pinot Noir, and Oregon as well. Um, and the cooler bits, some cooler bits of Australia, such as um, in the state of Victoria, um, are making some very nice Pinot Noirs. And Tasmania. Germany now gradually people are seeing um, Riesling or other varieties made in um, quite high alcohol content, uh, reaching almost 40%. But in your opinion, would you prefer to have lower alcohol such as so Riesling or Bible in the mind of high alcohol? That's a good question. Um, the, when climate change happened and the, the Germans started to make dry wine, I'm thinking back to around the turn of the century. Um, there were some wines that were definitely too alcoholic because the producers were trying to show that they could make strong wine. I think now good producers um, are very conscious of the fact they shouldn't make a heavy wine. And so generally speaking, I think the German wines are still quite well balanced. Um, and they're not, they're not, alcohol is not their aim anymore. But I agree, if climate change keeps on happening, then there may be a problem that the wines will get too alcoholic. But I don't think it's happened. It only it happened briefly, and then the producers realised they should they should pick a bit earlier, make fresher wines. But would you prefer lower alcohol? I would prefer. I, I don't want anything more than fourteen percent, ideally. Yeah, yeah. Anywhere. <laughs> Uh, hello, Jesse. Uh, I want to know 
But what makes you so interesting in the wine world and how to become the master of wines? And do you have some suggestions for that wines, uh, wine lovers? I'm not in that industry, but do you have some suggestions for uh, lovers like uh, those in other fields? And I want to be some, someday maybe I, I want to travel around the world to the fabulous winery and take as much uh, as many tours as you do. Um, a large, a large amount of money for a start. <laughs> I this this glass of Burgundy made me realise that uh, in good wine there is history and geography and uh, stories and wonderful people. Um, and uh, I'd always liked writing, and so I got a job writing about wine, which combined the two things. And I, um, for my job, it was necessary to go travelling. And so for 43 years, I've had the great pleasure of travelling around the wine world. Um, the only trouble is that uh, I'm too hard-working. And so I've tended to do too much work and not have enough of the nice thing. And so I'm, I'm trying to make a resolution to work slightly less hard and take a little bit of time to yet say yes to that lunch and yes to that dinner and, and not always be, you know, moving on. <laughs> but I hope, I hope for your sake that you have a chance to travel in the world of wine, and I think you will find the people both interesting and hospitable. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I think what helps is to attach birds to some character and just keep on doing it um, and off and then eventually the word becomes a shorthand for what you are sensing even if it is not really like you know Gewurztraminer, the great Gewurztraminer? No? No. Um, uh, um, what's a good example? Um, well, Cabernet Sauvignon, perhaps, of black currant, I don't, cassis, I don't know. And often people say, smell Cabernet and say, ah, cassis. And what they really mean is, that's the smell of Cabernet. And cassis is just a shortcut to it. Just keep trying, keep drinking, <laughs> keep tasting. Uh, I think we should have a chance to meet again. If we have any questions, we will have a chance to meet again.